Hi there, welcome to the new video. Today we'll be talking about this paper which is titled as Hierarchical Transformers for Long Document Classification. It is from authors from John Hopkins University and Avaya Conversational Intelligence. So this paper talks about using the original BERT model by extending its fine tuning procedure to address the long document classification problem and overcoming the limitation of just dealing with 512 tokens at a time. Although nowadays you have models like Longformer, ExcelNet that can go and do the classification for the long documents. So this paper came out a little early than those papers. So they just used BERT and tried to use some hierarchical layers with some windowing techniques for dealing with long documents. So let's read the abstract. So they say that the method is conceptually simple. They segment the input into smaller chunks and feed each of them into the base model. Okay, so let's say if you have a longer text of let's say 2000 words. So somehow they make multiple chunks of these 2000 text and then each of them goes to the BERT model post which they stack a single transformer or a recurrent layer followed by a softmax that would kind of do the classification into the number of classes that you have by giving a probability distribution over them. And once you do the fine tuning, you'll propagate that loss and train the recurrent layers or the transformer layers and then fine tune the bird weights as well. So yeah, this is the entire idea on which they work on. We'll see into further details of the performance comparison and how do they choose the parameters. But before that, I just wanted to mention like they run it on three experiments. One is on 20 news group dataset, which is the dataset of all the news across 20 domains. So you have to classify them each of those domains given the news text. So the average word length for this dataset is something around 700 to 800 words, which is again more than what BERT can treat at one go, which is 512 tokens. They also work on dataset of automatic ASR transcripts, which is based on the conversation between the customer and the support team. And these transcripts are around 5,000 words long, which is almost 10 times what BERT can handle. So the data sets look pretty apt for the task. And they found that this extension to BERT in terms of fine tuning is very quick and converges with just one epoch if your training data is really small. And they obtain a significant improvement of the baseline methods for at least two of these data sets. So yeah, that's it. Let's move forward. So as we saw already, like they have proposed two methods. One is putting recurrence layers like LSTM or RNN over the entire bird. And second one is to add one or two layer transformer over the original bird. So they accordingly named their work as recurrence over bird, which is Robert, which I'm not sure if it's intentional or something because it's just missing the A from the Roberta. And that also came across this time frame when this paper was released. Or if the Roberta was inspired by this, I don't know that. Because you see like the upper casing and the lower casing segments are also same. So yeah, that's my assumption, discard it out, I'm just thinking aloud. And the second one is transformer over BERT, which is TOBERT, okay? So the contributions of the paper are the two extensions, ROBERT and TOBERT, to the existing BERT-based model to enable the classification for long text by performing segmentation and then using another layer on top of that segment representation for the classification problem. And they found state-of-the-art results by then for Fisher topic classification task and they have the significant improvement over the customer satisfaction prediction task over this baseline model. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's move forward. Okay, so talking about the method. So they first give a background to what BERT is. So let me tell about that first. BERT stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representation of Transformers, which was open sourced by Google and was pre-trained on very large corpora from Chrome and Crawl, Wikipedia and stuff. And it had two objective functions. The first was called mask language modeling and the next one was NSP which is next sequence prediction. So under mask language modeling the idea is to predict any of the words in a given sequence of words based on the context in which it occurs. And for NSP the task is to classify if two sentences occur consecutively or not. So if you focus on this figure you have all the tokens of that sentences. It doesn't work at direct word level embeddings but further bifurcates into sub word units. So think of them as token 1 to token n. You append a CLS token at the starting as the dummy token and you also have another sequence of tokens for the second sentence and the first and the second sequences are concatenated with a separator token which is a marker for different segments that you want to deal with and accordingly different segment embeddings will also be initiated. So all of this goes to the BERT model and at the end you also get output of same length where T1 to Tn represent the embedding for each of these token 1 to token n and C represents the embedding learned for the dummy CLS token. So for having the NSP loss, you apply a softmax layer on top of it and get the posterior probability in terms of whether the second segment was followed by first segment or not. So it's a binary classification problem. And for MLM, you mask any of the random tokens from the input 
and you just try to predict that sequence at the output end. So you'll get a softmax over entire vocabulary V. And you calculate the cross entropy loss, which is minus T log P, where T is the truth and P is the probability that you predict for that token. So let's say if that word was the word the. So you'll have one hot encoded representation of the word the, where it'll have one somewhere. And then you'll have log. And then you have the probability of what model says for that word the. And let's say model said 0.9. So this will be the equivalent loss that propagate backwards and teams the parameters. If it would have been 0.1, let's say at that point, then the loss would have been relatively higher. So these are the two losses. Let's call them L1 and L2 on which the original bird was trained. Although nowadays you can find many papers that say the next sequence prediction loss hardly matters to the current performance of the bird model. And MLM itself is sufficient for training that model. And they have empirically proven that stuff as well. Also, you'll find many variations of the birds, let's say span birds. So here, as you can see, we are trying to predict a single token at any time step t. People have also proposed of predicting a span of, let's say, three words, two words at a time instead of just focusing at single word. And I've seen a performance boost in terms of what BERT has learned for language representation. So one of the works that I can recall is called span BERT. That follows this idea. I do have a video on this as well on this channel. I'll put that video in the i button. Make sure to check that out if you're interested. So that's what they have written under the methodology as a background. So now talking about the first model, which is recurrence over bird. So under this, what they do is they split the input sequence into segments of fixed size with the overlap. So they define the segment size to be 200 and the overlapping window size to be 50. They stack all the segment representation that you get from bird into a sequence to a 100 dimension LSTM layer, output from which can be considered as a document embedding, which is finally fed to a two fully connected layers with ReLU and softmax to the number of classes that you want to classify the document into. Okay, so let's see this in action. So let's say you have an entire document of 2000 words, and this is the timeline of that document. They divide 200 segment tokens in this. So let's say this be the first segment. And the next segment that define is post to free tokens of this segment which let's say starts like this and ends over here. So this is segment number two. Then you have third segment. This is segment number three. And then you have fourth segment, which is something like this. So from fourth segment, you will not do any kind of overlap with the previous window. So let's call this S1, S2, S3 and S4. So all of these S1, S2 and S3 and S4 and all of these S's that you see, let's call it SN, goes to the LSTM model. At the end of this LSTM unit, you get thought vector T that can be seen to represent the entire representation of all of these segments, which inherently is the representation of the entire document. Once you get that fixed representation, you pass it to a dense neural network of two layers, which is fully connected. And then you have a softmax and you get a probability distribution of, let's say, four classes. If you had, you'll get a distribution over those four classes. And based on the loss that you calculate, you'll fine tune this DNN model you'll fine tune the weights of these LSTM layers and accordingly you'll fine tune the weights for the BERT model. So all the S1, S2, S3 and S4, the representation that you get is from the BERT model essentially. And that output goes to the LSTM model. So you'll have BERT at this point, BERT at this point and accordingly you'll have BERT till end. And input to each of the BERT was the segment. So you had segments, it goes to BERT. BERT gives you the representation for the segment corresponding to the CLS token which goes to the LSTM model. The output from the LSTM goes to a dense neural network to a softmax unit, giving you the distribution across the number of classes that you want. So yeah, this is how essentially the recurrence of a bird model is trained. So clearly the idea for having an overlapping window is to have that continuous flow of information. Unlike if you don't have this overlapping concept, you might have disjoint representations that model has learned. So you want that model to learn a continuous flow to how language is written. So that's why they propose an overlapping concept. So with this, you overcome the bird's computational complexity by reducing it to order of nk. Okay, so if you see, in case of original bird, you have an order of n square complexity for the attention computation because it's fully connected computation, which means at any point in the bird, when you're trying to get a representation for any token, let's say ti, you will attend to all the tokens to its left and all the tokens to its right. And this happens for all the n tokens that you have. So that's why I order complexity of n square. Whereas in this case, if you see a bird's input is just a segment of k tokens. So you have order of k square computation for every bird. 
and since you divide the entire text into k segments so you have n by k number of word units if you multiply that by k square you get order of nk which is the complexity reduction that the authors talk about so yeah moving forward and then all of this goes to the lstm unit which has a linear complexity of k because you need to iterate over k segments output from the BERT model which can be neglected because you already have a higher term of order of nk also the pre-trained BERT model was just dealing with 512 tokens which means it was just dealing with those number of positional embeddings as well so with this strategy you kind of overcome that thing because you are kind of bifurcating the longer text into smaller segments which is in line in terms of what BERT has already learned in terms of positional embeddings so the second model that they talk about is called transformer over BERT so for this they again follow the same pipeline to what they followed in robert they just replace the recurring units with small transformers with two layers of transformer blocks because of the famous problem that rnn usually run into so if you see the architecture to how rnn works you will see this recurrence relation going forward so once you're doing a back propagation you are again calculating gradients in a recurrent fashion which eventually under practical conditions after a certain time step t usually tends to zero resulting in zero gradient flow because of which the early units are not trained and the network is limited by a certain length to what it can remember. So this problem is not there in transformers because they don't have this recurrence relation. Instead, they use positional embeddings to capture the position of words in a sequence and they can process all of this in parallel. So yeah, this was the second method that they used. Talking about the results. So they evaluate on both the conditions if you don't fine tune the BERT and if you fine tune the BERT model. We can clearly see that Tobert is outperforming BERT for all the datasets that we have. Especially for Fisher dataset that the margin is very huge. You have 38.04 for Robert and you have 80.68 for Tobert. In case you don't fine tune the BERT model. But now if you fine tune the BERT model, still Tobert has better performance compared to Robert. So yeah, that's about the results and then they have data statistics and experiments. So we are done with the paper now. So I had just one query in terms of selecting the segments and the overlapping window concept. So they didn't exactly tell to how did they come up with that number. Was it an empirical based study or it was a hunch? So I believe a bit on that would be really helpful for independent researchers who are trying to replicate the model. But overall, I found it was a really interesting read in terms of seeing if BERT can be scaled to such long documents or not. So having said that, if you like such content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And also share it across with your friends and tag it on social media. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye.